Okay. So I thought it's worth it to make a total beginner's guide for this game because it gets fairly complicated. There's a lot of things I wish someone would have told me when I first started playing. And now we're here. It's January 2024, so the game's out of early access. I'm going to walk you through like you've you've seen the game for the first time and we're just going to go from the basics. Okay. You hit play and you're looking at this map. This map, the middle part represents the smoldering city, which is like your main base area. But it has nothing to do with the actual game play as in when you're playing in the actual maps that we go into. It's like this is the interface where you do all your upgrades and everything. If we go into the smoldering city, this is where we can buy upgrades and deeds, which are basically, how can you say it? They're like achievements in the game and you cash them in for extra points. When you, upgrades are super important and I wouldn't put too much stock into which upgrades you get first. It seems to me for my over 100 hours now in the game, it doesn't really matter as a beginner. Just you're gonna want these upgrades. They're very important. It makes the game a lot easier. It's gonna be hard when you first get started because you don't have these upgrades. But for now, just think of it like you wanna get gears and artifacts, machinery, artifacts, and food stockpiles from winning actual map games to cash in to basically upgrade your guy. It's like in an RPG where you need to upgrade your character and this is how you get points to upgrade your character like in Skyrim or something like that. Like I'm leveling up. Yeah. And this, is, they just added this. This is just random. I, it kind of creeps me out actually. I don't like her eye. That's totally irrelevant. It's just goofy. Okay, so we go home. Oh no, see that's confusing. Why is it called home? I'm trying to go home to the map screen. Whatever. These Europeans. It's a good game though. Okay. So your first question is like you're playing Civilization or something. And you're like, oh, where do I want to start my settlement? Some things are good. And some things are bad. Like all of these are, are nasty. Little modifiers. And what do these question marks mean? They're just points of interest. And I won't go into the seals too much. Basically, the seals are like super hard maps. But if you win them, you get permanent rewards. Think of it that way as a beginner. We could go into much more detail, but you could do a whole video on just the seals. Think of it like that for now. As a beginner, unless you, I play a couple games before you start making it harder, it's like anything high risk, high reward. But as a beginner, you probably want to position yourself somewhere in the map close to the edge, close to some good question marks, and you want a good modifier. So let's look at this. Like this modifier gives you extra food. And this modifier gives you a better chance of finding ruins. Let's just do that because it's like a very basic one. And you can see that in this area you get like extra food. And those are the rewards you're going to get. So this is a pretty easy starting area. It's like low risk, low reward. You want you can look at the starting area. It really does it like it gives different biomes and stuff. But it's not a huge deal. Like it's not like you need to stress over where I'm going to put my thing. Don't it's not that complicated. It doesn't matter basically. Just try to make it easy on yourself and plan it out. Like eventually you're gonna wanna be like, oh, I wanna get this seal, this high powered seal, so I should position myself here. Because here's what's gonna happen. Each time you settle is like a point on the map and you're gonna eventually work your way forward. And this thing at the bottom is telling you your cycles before the next light storm, which is a really confusing way of saying like, you've got one chance to settle spots in the map 
by playing actual games, which are spots on the map, and get as far as you can before the storm comes. And when the storm comes, you can't make any more settlements. It's like a game of civilization, but each move isn't like planning a civilization. It's like playing an actual game that we're going to go into when I actually settle it. But that's the main point of the game actually happens here. It's like you're settling yourself across this map, trying to extend out to get better and better uh, seals. So I'm just going to start on this basic, like, easy area. And you see what I'm doing? Like, eventually this cloud's going to go away if I win. If you die, you just lose a spot on the map and keep going. And see how far you can get before the storm hits you. So let's go into it. Okay, this is saying like you're gonna start a game now. You can pick from different caravans, which are loadouts of what people and what resources you're gonna get. These embarkation bonuses are extra. Obviously, like you think bonuses that you can do, and I'll show you in a second how to plan those out. This is the summary of what's going to happen, and I'll get into impatience and everything when we actually start it. It'll make more sense when we play an uh, actual game. That's how much fertile soil. It's basically an overview, what total rewards you're going to get, and the conditions. And I'm going to play on veteran because that shows you everything, but it's not too punishing that it's going to be complicated. In Pioneer, you don't have Blight Rot, and I want to show you what Blight Rot is. Now, what does it matter what creatures or what citizens you have? Like, what's the difference between a beaver or a human and everything? Okay, look. How to explain this simply? The beavers are really good at logging, obviously. So they're going to be good at woodworking and engineering stuff. The humans are great farmers. They're what you want to do if you're planning on making a lot of farms. The harpies are great at cloth and like alchemy so it depends on how you're going to plan this out and they have foxes and lizards lizards are good at meat and anything to do with like fire because they're like hot and the foxes are good at glade events which is something we'll go into they all have their pros and cons and as a beginner to tell you the truth it doesn't matter just don't stress over it you'll see as you play more I'm going to go with beavers and humans because this is a good well-rounded ratio and I think woodworking is very important. I like to start out strong with a large amount of wood. Now villages are always a very important embarkation bonus because you're going to see why we want a grip of villagers. I like to have a small farm. If I can get a small farm I will because personally I like to do a lot of farms. And with these extra four, I'll do, it's worth thinking about. I like to go with fuel. You'll see that fuel is very useful. I'm gonna go with oil. I feel safe having a large fuel supply if I can afford it with an embarkation bonus. How do you get more embarkation points? It depends on your distance from the Citadel, the upgrades that you've had previously and things that you did you can win more from other levels and things but in general you're gonna have a base amount of embarkation points every time and just try to spend them wisely this is important and make sure you use them don't just embark without getting your embarkation bonuses that'll screw you over you're gonna want that I remember when I first started playing, I stressed about the food. I said, oh no, are my people gonna starve or are these wood and plank? All of this stuff you're gonna get in the world, but oil you can't just get, you're gonna have to make it. So it's nice to have some on deck. Villagers you can't get really, unless you find them in a glade. So it's nice to have those and farms you can get, but it's not, these are all things. It's just, it's nice to have them in the beginning and you'll see why. And of course, name your settlement. And I'll just call this one training. But I, I sometimes name it something funny. Or you do like a role playing thing. Okay. I think that covers it. And these prestiges, what does that mean? It's like 
when you win this, you'll unlock more prestige. It's like super high difficulty when you get past Viceroy. But let's not get into it. We'll stick with Veteran and I'll show you how it's going to go down. Alright, let's embark. Okay, now this is like the real game. So you're going to come into the world. It's telling you your additional effects. Don't stress about these too much. It's long story short telling you stuff that's going to go down as like every year. Okay, before we get started, I will explain the system. Just like how I said there's a season with a storm coming up out in the main map. There's seasons in the cycle here with a storm that comes every year. And when the storm hits, negative effects happen, and it's much harder. And you're kind of planning for the storm. And when you start out, it's not the storm. It's like different seasons called drizzle, clearance, and then the storm hits. And then the cycle happens again. Every season but the storm is nice and has benefits, but the storm basically screws you over. So you want to get prepared for that and do what you can. That's why having fuel is a nice little safety net, as we'll see. Okay, so here's my small herbalist camp. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. If you've never played the game before, let's just talk about what's happening. This is the warehouse. It's where you store all your stuff. You guys are going to go in there, take stuff out of the warehouse, do things with it, bring it around to the different buildings. Simple enough. This is your main hearth. You can sacrifice fuel in it to make the storm easier. You can upgrade it to make the storm easier, and your workers are going to take breaks there, but they don't live there. They just sort of hang out in front of it to keep themselves warm. It's important to keep them happy, which in this game is called Resolve. Now, down here you choose new buildings and you start out with three. I personally like to wait to use them for a little bit because I don't know exactly how things are going to go down, as you'll see. On your left, simple enough, is your reputation points, which is like good things. You get these good things from different events and from your people having high resolve or being happy. On the right is the Queen's Impatience, which is like bad stuff. It happens over time, just always. And it happens is you don't complete orders or your people aren't happy, which is actually quite easy to happen. And it's going to increase over time. Now, let me just check something. Okay, I'm recording. It's worth checking. I get paranoid. One of the most important... Well, here's where you build buildings. Over here... That's just marking trees for harvesting, clearing mark trees, and this is delete a building. Over here is a symbol for blight rot, which we'll talk about. Over here are recipes, trade routes, consumption control. We'll talk about it. As a beginner, just don't stress about it. We'll keep it simple. The other thing is like, you'll notice bad things are gonna happen. You're not gonna die yet. It takes a lot to lose actually so don't panic but keep it paused for now we're gonna walk through it first things first you want to build some stuff obviously one of the first things you want let's talk about parts though these parts here that you see the little gear symbol those are what you use to build a lot of the main buildings like warehouses and uh, woodcutters camps important things like that so don't waste them all they're kind of rare and a very important item and it's not like a currency but it's like a resource for building use them wisely but we always want two sometimes one to two woodcutters camps i'm gonna go with one so there i put it right there because i've got these two glades here which I'm going to get into. These are berries. As I said, you don't want to stress about food too much because often you're going to find food. And you start out with a little bit of food. Unless it's like a really hard difficulty or a bad map area, you're going to start out with food. 
Okay, so a small herbalist's camp is what you use. It tells you, like, this is what you need. You can upgrade them. We'll talk about the upgrades later. For now, you just have a basic one. This is also something, but it's not food. It's something you use in certain recipes. Also important. I'll use a harvester's camp to harvest it. When I start out, I like to harvest whatever I can. Like if I have these berries and I have these reeds here, I'm gonna use them. I'm gonna put things down to take them. That's a good way to start. Is like, what do I have? So what can I make to harvest? Use all your resources. There's something else that's very important that you might not know as a beginner, and that is called a crude workstation. It's where you make the planks, fabric, bricks, and pipes, which are your bread and butter of production. It's gonna go right there. And now we can hit play. Don't speed it up yet. Take it slow. Okay. Sorry, I was taking a sip of water. Okay, so they're building the buildings. Cute little guys. And of course, beavers are gonna be the, the woodsmen. Doesn't, if I had harpies, if I had them, this is where they would go. I don't, so I'll just use humans. In the hearth, pro tip, reptiles like heat, so gain yourself a little resolve. If you have lizards, put him in the fire, like make him the fire keeper. Now he's stoked because he likes it in there because he's a lizard. Makes sense, right? It's got these little symbols. It's telling me I don't have enough wood to make that building. Don't freak out about it. They're working on it, right? Now, just patience. Patience is a virtue in this game. You don't want to put it on times three right from the beginning. It's better to take your time. I like to pause a lot. Think about, think things through, you know? It's no rush here. This is a cornerstone. Your cornerstones are very nice. They're always positive things. But make sure you pick good ones. This generous gifts uh, cornerstone they have these days is super overpowered. Like, take that one. These are pretty good. That's pretty good too. But you can reroll it twice, but don't do it unless you got really bad ones. This one's sick. The newcomers, when I upgrade my hearth, which I'm going to, are going to bring me way more goods. Now. I got my cornerstone. I like to watch them too, it's kind of relaxing. I like the little viewers. Especially the viewers are my favorite. As you would hope. The harpies are my least favorite. They seem to be kind of true like. Now, let's talk about, oh, they found a, I shouldn't have done that. I didn't want to talk about glades yet. You have options with the woodcutters and always you should have them on avoid glades except mark. And you can hold shift to do that to all the woodcutters if you have more than one. What does it mean? Marked is like, you can mark trees. I could have said like, yeah, if you get to these trees, you can cut them basically. But when it's on what it was, they were just gonna cut everything, so they did. And now I already have a glade opened. Let's talk about glades. These are hidden areas. As you can see, we don't know what's in them, but they'll have these symbols that tell you like, these have nasty stuff inside, but high risk, high rewards. Wait to go into there. You don't have enough resources to deal with those yet. These little ones, are worth going into but you don't want to go in them too early because they take your resolve down it's like going into hostile areas scares your people a little bit if you can 
I like to just stay in my lane for a little bit. I'm gonna put him on a Void Glaze, except Mark. But it's fine. Pause it again to talk to you about this. All of these are very crucial resources. I'm gonna be making reads. This is a key to the game that I wish someone would have explained to me before. It has to do with recipes. When you click this, it shows you that making stuff, they often have a lot of different options. You can hold shift and pick which one you want to take as priority or which ones you want to use. That comes in very handy. I want reeds because I'm harvesting reeds right there. Planks can only use wood. Bricks doesn't matter right now because I don't have either. Pipes doesn't matter, I don't have either. And occasionally there's many good reasons that you want to not be making them. We'll get into that. But for now, I want him to make everything. We're gonna get all these resources eventually, and I'm gonna have, it doesn't matter who's in here. It could, it could be a lizard, it could be a human. They don't care. The crude workstation, it doesn't matter. And they're just gonna grind out. This is what you use to make other buildings. So this is super important. That's why I say build a crude workstation first. You wanna be smashing out planks, fabric, bricks, and pipes if you can. You'll see why. It's one of the most important things. Take it slow, but stay on the ass of like, you want to be getting these reeds and berries. Don't slip on your resources. You want to harvest, harvest. This is good. This is a copper vein. I'm not going to build a mine yet because it's a lot of resources, but it's good to know. This is going to become a mine eventually. I stay, like I'm saying, you want to stay on these resources. A reed field, so that's good to know. Now when they're done here, they'll have another reed field to go to. I could also build two reed buildings and be harvesting two at once, but it's not worth it to do that right now. One thing at a time. Like, that's why I say don't get ahead of yourself. Just when you start out, you only need one of each building. That's kind of a lot of information we've dealt with so far. So just take a moment to breathe and recap. And now we'll talk about orders. The orders are very important. These are your main objectives and they're gonna help you gain the blue bar to win. When your blue bar hits all the way to here, you're in gold, you've won. But if the red goes, you're screwed. These are timed. I don't wanna do a timed one right now, that's too stressful. I know I have humans, and I already have the ability to build a small farm because I picked that in my loadout start. You see what I'm saying? My reasoning here, I already can make a small farm because I picked it. And I know I'm going to use humans to farm, so I'm going to be able to do this order. I'm going to pick that one because I know it's going to happen. This would also be a good option, but I like this one better and it has better rewards, so I'm taking that. I'm going to do this. I definitely, I like my Glade events and I'm going to do this, but this is actually pretty good. Actually, I know for a fact, we'll talk about trading at Amber's, but this is going to happen. So I pick my orders based on what's more likely to happen because I want to do these as fast as possible. Humans are pretty easy to get stoked, but that's really easy too. I'm definitely going to have 30 flower. It's hard to say. Now I'll think about which I want more. I like the idea of getting parts, and I'm gonna want more humans, so I'll go with this. Okay. So we're logging away here. I'm gonna tell him, by all means, take this little glade. Let's see what season. We're in Drizzle of year one. Clearance is next, then the storm's gonna hit. But it's nothing to stress about. Now. See this little symbol here that says they're homeless? It's cause they don't have homes. Let's talk about homes. A big shelter is pretty good to start out with. The little shelter is nice too, but eventually you're gonna want specialized houses for people. I'm going to build a lizard house because I only have two lizards, so I'm gonna get their resolve way up by just building one little lizard house. Do you see what I'm saying? I do this. Now these lizards are going to be stoked because every lizard's going to have a home. 
I'm also going to build a big shelter. And I'll put it maybe over here in the corner. This tells me there's fertile soil in here. I'll be opening this glade. The fertile soil is what you use to make farms. Just checking my time there. Okay. So we're moving along with everything. I still haven't even opened my building options because I don't want to yet. We'll talk about the archaeologist. But that's too complicated right now. I'm not going to overload a beginner with too much info. What do you need to get out of all of this is like resources, which are just things on the map and buildings to harvest those resources. Get your people into some houses. Start logging start production and you're off to a real smooth start on any difficulty setting look see what i'm talking about my lizards are like hell yeah i got a little house thor sees red scale cute little guys i like to keep them happy i don't favor any race because you can favor them here never i love each of them Maybe the beef is the best. Now. It's kind of relaxing just to watch them. I think it's worth it to take a moment to really... A lot of my appreciation for this game, I will take a moment to say this, is like... I could stress about all the mechanics and everything, but I gotta tell you, like, if you're someone who just wants to enjoy a game like a lot of the fun of this game comes from just watching the little guys move around listen to the music it's a real vibe is what i'm trying to tell you and like if you want to just have an enjoyable time worry about the mechanics and everything and of course you want to win but just get into the vibe you know listen to that music watch these little guys move around i'm feeling relaxed their human resolve is already at 23 as you can see i picked my orders like a total boss so i'm already off i'm gonna win no chance in hell i know i'm gonna win because i'm damn good at what i do okay deliver the orders oh this is perfect this is called a small encampment in it you can check, pick two options. You can welcome new people, or you can send them away, and you'll get money, basically. Amber is money in this game. I'm gonna welcome them for reasons you will see. Having as many people as possible is the smartest, most high IQ choice you can make. And if I have food to spare, Comrades will be welcomed into the fold. There's also something awesome in here, a fuel source called sea marrow. Very important. Ooh, and there's eggs in here. Oh man, we kind of got lucky. We kind of got real lucky with this one. See what I'm telling you? Like I'm looking around, I'm looking for resources. Like what can I harvest out of this world? I got sea marrow and eggs, so I'm off to a real smooth sailing. Damn smooth. That Native American flute really hits a certain vibe. I don't smoke a lot of uh, weed, but if I did, I think I'd like to play this game while doing so, because it's got that real chill vibe. Now, Stonecutter's camp is being built. That storm's going to hit in about three minutes, and things are going to go real badly in a little second. Now, let's get... Just one. I want to keep one out for building. See what? I'm going to pause to explain this. 
You want some free workers because that's who you use to build stuff. If I put another human in here, then I have no people to build things, so that's not a good choice. But I do want that team arrow. I'm gonna show you another little pro tip. This, not talking about the sacrifices here, I'm talking about the different fuel sources. Coal, which you luckily you start out with a little bit most of the time. That seam arrow, which is why I'm harvesting it, it's an important fuel source. The oil, which I chose to have in my embarkation, if you recall. And wood. Now this, I'm taking it, I'm telling him don't use wood in the fire anymore. And now... I'm gonna have extra wood for precious planks, and it's important in other things later, you'll see. That's a good little pro tip, is just deselect wood after a while, if you have other fuel sources. Like, I know they're getting into this sea marrow now, so I'm not worried about running out of fuel. I got, like, oil, basically. Well, it's not oil, it's sea marrow. But... It's like I struck oil. Like, there will be blood. I drink your milkshake. Oh, look at him. I like sometimes just zooming in. There's a lot of little detail in this game. Look at him go. That's a human. Okay. Something awesome happened. Those newcomers are now in my builders. Meaning they're like free workers. Okay, so now I can... See how I told you the lizards like to harvest meat? And now I'm going to show you a pro tip. I have three lizards. I know one of them is in here, but where's the other one? Not there. Oh, there he is. See? It's stupid. It's a low IQ move for him to be in this crude workstation. Why? Because lizards like doing meat. They're good at it. You should have them working on the meat. It's like, if you had an electrician, you wouldn't have him doing carpentry. You, and the meat, they're like pro meat makers, harvesters. So it's stupid for me to have him there. I'll instead have humans in here. And now I can have both lizards in here. Perfect. Now I'm gonna get extra meat faster and better or eggs, but eggs count as meat. I guess they're good at just harvesting live things. Again, if I had harpies, they would be good in here, but I don't. The beavers are good at harvesting wood. So see what I did there? All the people who are good at things are doing what they're good at. I'm special, I'm focusing on specializ specialization. Sorry. Okay, with this storm about to hit, I need another plank, and I want that big shelter down. Hurry it up, lads, because when that storm hits, we're all going to be holding on to our asses. And ain't that the truth? <clears throat> okay, so keep harvesting. I'm gonna have them go over here. Because I know for a fact I'm eventually gonna want to get into this glade. So I may as well start thinning it out now. I think at this point you've probably learned a lot about the game. And if you got this far, you'd be off to a really smooth start. I would say, if you're feeling like a big information download at this point, take a break. I could turn this into like a two-parter, but I'm like on a roll, so I'm just going to keep going with it. But feel free to take a break, come back to this later. I'm going to get into the more complicated aspects, like this storm that's about to shit on us. Shit on us. I'm also going to begin swearing at this portion in the video. If you notice, I tried not to swear before. I'm gonna start. So this storm's gonna take a shit on us real shortly. And we're gonna be fucked, for lack of a better term. Here we go. 
what does this say? Oh, they don't have, they ran out of reeds, which is like I was telling you with Flora. I got more reeds over here. So I move them over. And that's a bingo. Okay. <clears throat> it's a short storm. And my people were already pretty happy, so the storm didn't affect them that much. But they're not having the best of times. I'm gonna put some humans in a house now. I'm starting to work on specialization at this point. And I've got two people just sitting around. That's a little more than we'd like, unless we're trying to do like a huge building spree. I like to keep about one to two humans out, but I don't even have the plank to build right now. So this is the type of stuff, if you're trying to really be productive in this game, that's going to be a little bit of a drain. You could use them somewhere, but I don't have anywhere to use them. So they're just kind of waiting around. It's better to have them and not use them than not have them though, I'll tell you that. This is not the worst storm in the world, because I was already off to such a good start. I have a lot of people in homes. They were already happy, they have food. Food's coming in from different resources, I got fuel. So, no, I'm not crying. But let's say that I was, then we can talk about sacrifices. You can do like this. Make sure you click this. I don't know why you wouldn't. Now I'm burning extra fuel. In this case, wood that I harvested. And if you see, it's raising their happiness level. Their resolve has gone way up. So, But it also burns through a ton. I would do that if they were in the red. Like, if they were really unhappy and they get too unhappy, they leave, which is terrible. That's like your villagers dying. If it gets to that point, then you want to start sacrificing wood if you can afford it. Okay. So at this stage, we're kind of just waiting out the storm. We're harvesting wood. We got these guys. And now I start to think to myself, okay, I've noticed some holes in the operation, haven't you? I seem to not have a lot of planks that I need for certain things. I'd like to have more of those. Fabric, yeah. Bricks, yeah, but I don't have clay or stone. I got stone, but I'd like more clay. What else? It's mainly that th that plank uh, problem is going to add up. I need more planks because I want to build more stuff. So why do I say that? Now we're going to choose new buildings. Ooh. This is really good. These advanced camps. Let me tell you why this is good. When you break into one of these larger great glades, it's going to have huge resource nodes, like bigger than this. And you can't harvest them without a larger camp, like an advanced camp. I just have an option here to get that advanced camp. The problem is I don't know what's going to be in here yet. So you know what I'm going to do? Something smart. I'm going to wait until the storm's over. You'll see what I'm going to do. When the storm's over, I'm going to pop this glade. Then when I know what's in there, I can pick my reputation bonus accordingly. Or you could gamble, but you know, why do that? Are you stupid? Now we wait. This is a good game for like if you have a little tea or something next to you, because from time to time you get little breaks like that. Take a little sip. Take a pause. It's not good to be on constantly grinding it out, you know? Okay. Storm's almost over. At that point, storm's over. I tell him, pop this glade, boys. Have any of you guys seen Tim and Eric when it's like, but, but, beaver boys, but, 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 beaver boy. It reminds me of this. And this is good because it's three, but this is also three, but this one gives you tool, herbs, 
I'm gonna go with this one because I want more beavers. Because I need planks and wood is what I'm low on. At this point, I'm gonna build another woodcutter's camp. Some people will argue oddly in detail about this point of how many woodcutters camps, whether one or two, and do to do. It's personal preference. Don't become a autist about it, arguing like the semantics. But I think it's nice to have two or three woodcutters camps. Later, by the end of some games, I'll have five or six. It just depends on how you're going to play, how many planks you think you're going to need, or what you're using your wood on. I'm going with two, for now. Global production, that's shit. You're fucking retarded if you pick that one. Some of these are really long. Don't worry about that one, that's pretty good. That could, that actually, that one's nice. That's stupid. That's fucking shit. That one's always good. That one's actually crazy. I like that one. Hell yeah. Okay. There actually wasn't any deposits in here, any large deposits. So. This is fertile ground. Looks like we're farming. See how quick I am to get on it? The beaver boys are back in business. Okay, new threat. Let me explain to you what a threat means. This <clears throat> has some requirements like bad stuff is going to happen. And you have to get the right resources to either burn it down and get skewers and incense or whatever it depends on what type of event it is or you can perform a ritual to something good will happen it depends on what event but every event is like this you can either spend some resources to gain some resources or you can spend more resources have a little negative effect but something long-term beneficial will happen i usually try to go to that one see why i picked oil first See why I picked oil as my embarkation? Because it's often a glade event, too. And was I going to be making oil at this point? I'm going to take some of the beaver boys back up. Because I need them for this for this glade event. Get to work, lads. Okay. And now we go into like the medium to late stage of the game. And I think the video has gone on long enough at this point. I can make a part two. But I hope this helped you out a lot. Please let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if this has been helpful. I'd be glad to go into detail about anything else in the game. If you're confused about a certain point, I can make other videos. This is just a real rough starting point. I wanted to give someone who's got no idea of the game a little breath of fresh air so you're not totally lost like I was when I first went into it. But it is a great game. It's a lot of fun. I think you can get out of it what you put into it. And again, I'm here to help if you have any further questions. What was my plan going through now? What am I going to do? I want to get farms running. I want to get wheat from here i'm gonna start making flour and i'm gonna start making food with the wheat i'm gonna start like a food production facility i'm gonna get into this heavy rock i don't need an advanced camp for that so i'm gonna move my stone cutter camp after i've harvested this marrow i'm gonna start smashing out the rock i'm gonna lay out copper mines and i'm gonna mine copper i'm gonna take care of these abandoned cache which is another type of citadel event i'm gonna use my tools I'm gonna send it to the Citadel and get even more points. I'm gonna start picking buildings. I'm gonna turn this thing into a vast empire like Elon Musk. And I'm just gonna 
mop the floor with this, and the queen wouldn't know what hit her. At this stage, I am. it's going to take me another like 45 minutes to an hour, but I'm going to clear this map. Like, I have no doubt in my mind, the way things are laid out right now, that I have no chance of losing. In fact, I'm going to be laughing. These people are going to have like 30 resolve by the time I'm going to be done. I could win on resolve alone. I don't even need to complete orders. Like, this is a gold. This is gold. I didn't get into Blight Rot. I will talk about Blight Rot a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to talk about Blight Rot. This is like a little PS of the video. What I could do is connect pipes. And I'll just show you as an example. Now they have this little engine. As I use this engine, I don't have any water at this point. It comes from the rain. At this point, I don't have it, so I turn it off. But if I did have water to use like fuel, it would power it to increase production. As that happens, it increases your blight rot. The more the machines use water, they corrupt. It's like smog or something out of a car. So you need to create this blight post, which is like a smog testing facility that every storm, the guys are gonna, even when it's not a storm, they're gonna stay in there and use wood. Once again, wood comes in as an important resource to create precious, uh, I think it's called blight fuel or something. And they're gonna use it and you can store it in a hydrant but you don't need to yeah it's called purging fire you don't need to store extra yet and when the storm happens they're gonna rush out of there with their purging fire and basically destroy the blight rot so if you have a good system going you can have rain coming in from either geysers like this that you build pumps on or where is it a rain collector and foxes are really good at collecting rain they're like efficient at it like how the beavers are efficient at collecting wood and you're going to use that rain that you've collected to power all your shit but it's going to corrupt your hearth but then your blight fighter is going to run out and clean it up every time the storm hits and you're going to basically have even further increase your production and that's something you can do if you're really trying to get precise but you don't have to. You, you could win without ever using it. And okay, that's it for this video. It's gone very long. And as you can see, this is a very complicated and extensive little game. It's much more to it than meets the eye. And it can confuse you if you get lost in the weeds. So I hope that I helped you. Enjoy the game and have fun. Yeah, thanks again. Goodbye.